It's difficult to imagine the size of a blue whale until you come right alongside one. They are the biggest creature to have ever lived, but as big as they are, we know precious little about them. Hunted almost to extinction just a few decades ago, we're now missing vital information about how to protect the blue whale. I spent a week searching the turquoise waters of the Maldives for these magnificent beasts, along with a group of Aussie scientists desperate to save them. Racing across the choppy waters of the Indian Ocean, we're on a mission to find the biggest creature that has ever lived. Go in, go in, in, in. The elusive blue whale. They're enormous animals, and you'd think they're very easy to study. You'd just go out and, and there they are. But actually, it's a big ocean, a needle in a haystack. But it's, a, it's a fairly big needle, but it's a huge, <laughs> it's a huge haystack. That haystack is the ancient atolls of the Maldives. And our guide is marine biologist Dr Charles Anderson, who is trying to hunt down the blue whale in order to save it. It's a very enigmatic beast. It is so difficult to understand what it's up to. So for anybody who's got any curiosity, and I think that's, that's most of us, uh, you've got to be driven to, to try and find out a little bit more. The fact is, we know next to nothing about these ancient giants. And Australia's leading the world in the quest to unlock their secrets. Wow, look at that. There's such wonderful life here, isn't there, in the ocean? It's amazing. It's amazing. The vegetation diversity is amazing here. Catherine Atthard and Luciana Muller have come to this remote corner of the globe from Flinders University in Adelaide. It's a stunning workplace, but the only thing they really have eyes for is a 170-ton blue whale. Every time I see one, I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> They're powerful. Yeah, powerful and majestic and... Elusive. <laughs> yeah, they can be elusive. So how important is this research to your team? It's very important because we know so little about blue whales and we need that information to be able to have good conservation measures that actually protect the whales. Just a little bit of perspective on these beautiful creatures. A fully grown blue whale is more than 30 metres long and has a tongue that weighs more than an elephant. Its massive frame is powered by a heart that's bigger than a Mini Cooper. A man could crawl through its main artery. Up to 100 people could fit inside its mouth, but fortunately for us, it's only four tons of plankton on the menu. They are truly something to behold. So we've got one that's washed up here. Stumbling across a piece of blue whale skull, isn't your average bit of beach debris. This is the, the top of the skull, it's upside down. The mouth would have been here, the rest of the body there. The whole skeleton would have, would have weighed more than a ton, of course. This is just one part of it. That's got some real weight to it. Yeah, marine mammals, are, it, is, it is heavy. Marine yeah. mammals are, are buoyed up by the seawater and, and they're blubber, um, so they don't need to have light bones. They have, they have very solid bones indeed, as you can tell from this. Is there anything that you can do with this now? A, a tiny, tiny sample of this. Uh, we can extract the DNA, we can find out what species it is, uh, what population it comes from. Another piece in the puzzle. Another piece in the puzzle, yes. But the real scientific pay dirt is studying a live whale. And there's no other way to do that than methodically scanning these turquoise waters in the hope we get close enough to take a DNA sample. Well, for genetics, we need to get a little bit of skin sample where we can extract DNA from the skin. And then we compare the DNA between the blue whales in this region, as well as blue whales that we already have samples from in Australia and Antarctica and other areas to work out what population they belong to and what subspecies of blue whale they are. 
The search is slow and at times frustrating. Till finally, after days on the hunt. Luciana, we got one? Well, we are ready to go. But we need to get up close and personal. And if we do, Luciana will use this modified rifle to shoot a dart at the whale, extracting a tiny sample of skin containing precious DNA. Go in, go in, in, in. If she can hit her target. There it is, straight up now, straight up now, straight up now. Keep going. Ahead of the footprint. Ahead of the footprint. Here it is, Ahead. here it is. Close. Look at the size of it. Shit. But it's a heartbreaking near miss. That was as close as we've been to these blue whales so far on this trip. Literally just 10 metres away, but this is the problem. They come up for such a short time and then dive down again for 18, 20 minutes and pop up somewhere else. It's pretty frustrating. DNA might be the main game, but there's other important research going on out here. Marine biologist Libby Eyre is recording the haunting whale song to better understand how they communicate and, all importantly, where the blue whales travel. With my acoustic work, because the populations of whales have slightly different sounds, a little bit like dialects, then we can match that up with the genetics and then hopefully work out who are these whales? Where do they go? What do they do? Can you understand why they, they stay away from us? Yeah, I mean, they're long-lived animals, so who knows how long exactly they live for, but those that are, you know, 70, 80, 90 years of age have possibly got a history of people. Um, and, you know, don't go near those big, noisy, hard things um, because, you know, they hurt. <laughs> It's a sobering thought that some whales alive today may remember when people hunted them to the brink of extinction. Over a period of a century, almost all blue whales were slaughtered, about 360,000 worldwide. Now, it is estimated just 10,000 remain. Many countries, uh, including Great Britain, including Australia, uh, carried out commercial whaling. And the Soviet Union, as, as then was, had a number of big whaling fleets. The Soviet fleet came down into the Indian Ocean and they pretty much cleaned up. They took probably 90% of the blue whales out of the northern Indian Ocean. Hunting may be long gone, but restoring the blue whale population is proving slow going. Researchers believe the explosion of human ocean activity could be to blame. Shipping, mining, sonar, all playing havoc with how they communicate and ultimately reproduce. Blue whales nowadays face some different challenges. It's no longer the semi-quiet world that they used to live in. There's additional noises that, that they have with shipping, particularly in the area up north to us. There's seismic surveys, there's noise pollution, basically. And if you think about a whale, they live in an acoustic world. Is it a race against time? It is in many ways, because some of these stocks are recovering very, very slowly. Yeah. So, when we track another one down, it's game on to get that DNA sample. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, Abu, to the left. Keep going, stay there, stay there. Keep going to the left. Stay, stay. Keep going ahead, ahead. Go, go, got it. Woo! Got it. Got it. It's one small sample, but a big result for these dedicated researchers. Well done. Well done. And their quest to understand these mysterious mammals of the deep. They're shy. I think they are a bit shy, yeah. So you've got to be a bit careful with them. You've got to be 
You've got to be gentle with them. Maybe they don't like what they see in us. Who could blame them? We're the so-called custodians of this planet. They're the largest animals that we have. They live in a different world to ours, but they share the planet. If we cannot possibly save such large, beautiful beings, you know, what hope is there, really? Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.